In this video, we'll modify the background color of a button using a color state list resource. We're going to build this UI where we update the background color and text color of the button when we tap on it or if it's in the press state. We'll also update the UI of the button if it's disabled. By default, Android apps are styled using a theme which defines various attributes, such as the background color and click ripple animation of a button. Using a color state list is a nice, simple way to customize your button without needing to define shape drawables or create custom images. I have here a mostly empty project where the only change I've made is I've updated the root element of the activity main XML to be a linear layout instead of a constraint layout. And this linear layout has a vertical orientation with a gravity of center, which just means I want everything to be horizontally and vertically centered. Inside of the linear layout is a button, which just says click me. And our goal is to update the button UI so that we can update the background color or text color according to the state of the button, whether it's disabled, pressed, or selected. Though our first approach might be to simply update the background attribute on the button to be the color that we desire. So if we try that, you can see that the preview got updated, but when I try running the app, now you'll notice I don't get any feedback when I click on the button and the button has no corner radius. By setting the background attribute of the button, we're unintentionally losing these other attributes. The ripple animation and corner radius are coming from the base button style in Android. In order to preserve these, we'd instead like to define the background tint attribute instead of the background attribute. Now, when I tap on the button, you can see that I do get this animation of the button getting a little bit darker. The background tint attribute only has effect on phones running API version 21 or higher, but that includes around 95% of devices. So most of you should be okay. Hard coding an RGB color value for the background tint attribute is an improvement over what we had, but we'd still like control over the background color and text color of the button when it enters into various states. For example, when I've clicked on it or when it's in the pressed state. In order to do that, we'll use something called a color state list. The color state list is a resource that can be used anywhere that a color is used. So what we're going to do is define a new color state list resource and replace the background tint attribute with the new resource that we define. So if I open up the project, inside of the resources directory, I'm going to create a new resource directory. And we'll, we'll call this directory color, and the resource type will be values, and the rest we'll leave as default. Inside of this new color resource directory, let's define a new resource file called button background color. And the root element will be a selector. Tap OK. The idea of the selector tag is that we're going to place various item elements inside of it, and the Android system will use this as a way to determine which color to apply onto the button background tint attribute. So I'm going to put the same color that we had from before right here and then close the tag. And so what this is saying is by default, always just return this color uh, whenever this button background color is referenced. So now back in activity main.xml, we can reference the button background color.xml as the background tint attribute on our button. So now the button should be identical to what we had before. The power of the color state list resource is that we're able to define a different color based on the state of the underlying view. So in this case, the button can be in enabled, pressed, selected states. So for example, we might only want to have the button be this red color if the button's in the pressed state. So I'm gonna just add in the state pressed attribute and set this equal to true. And if our button is not in any of the previously defined states, we'll want to provide a default background color for the button, which will be white. So we can see the color of the button is indeed white. If I press the button, it turns red. If I stop pressing, it goes back to the default white color. If we go back to what we're trying to build, we'd like for the button background to change color when it's selected. So after I tap it once, it should actually go into a different state. In order to make that happen, we're gonna go into main activity and reference that button with an ID of button. So I'm going to add a click listener on this button. And I'm just going to change the state of the is selected property on the button to be the opposite of what it was when we tap on it, when we click it. So this won't have any UI change yet, but every time I click on the button, I'm setting the value of is selected to be the opposite of what it was. Now, going back into the list of colors defined in button background color.xml, we can add one more item element inside of the selector tag to define 
what the color of the button background should be when the state is selected. I'll use the same reddish color that we had defined from before, and we'll qualify this item tag with the state selected equal to true. So if we try this now, if we tap on the button, it should now go into the selected state based on the logic that we added, and it should stay this red color. And there you can see it does. And if I make it unselected, you can see it goes back to the white color that we had because the button is not selected, so we'll fall into the default case where the color is white. Let's update the state pressed color of the button to be this pink shade. Let's also add one more state into the selector for when the button is disabled. So for that, I'm gonna use a gray color to indicate that this button is disabled. And the state here will be enabled is false. In order to allow the user to actually enable or disable the button, we will go back into the activity main and let's add in a switch UI element here. This will be wrap content, wrap content. By default, let's have this switch be true and we'll give a, a text attribute of enabled so that the user knows that this switch is to enable or disable the button. And finally, let's give this view an ID of button switch. So let's copy over the ID, go into mainactivity.kotlin, and let's add a listener for when the switch has been changed. So we're defining here an anonymous Lambda function, which will be invoked every time the user enables or disables that switch. And so this is checked input parameter is going to tell us the value of the switch. And if the value is enabled, that means that the button is enabled. So we'll say the button and the is enabled property is equal to exactly whatever is the value of the switch is checked. Let's try it. So now from before, if I tap on the button, I'm in the selected state. So we change the background color to red. And also when I'm pressed, we also updated that pink color so you can see that. If I change the value of the switch to be disabled, you can see the button is now disabled and we get this gray background, which is what we expect. I mentioned earlier how the color state list resource can be used anywhere that a color is used. So going back into activity main.xml, if we wanted to update the text color of the button, we can again do that using a color state list. So I'm gonna define another resource file in the color directory call this button text color. And the root element should be a selector because we want the text color to change based on the state of the button view. And here by default, we would like the color to be that red color that we had. And if the button is disabled or if it's selected, we'd like to update the text color of the button to be white. The first item tag will be for if the button is state enabled is false, meaning the button is disabled, it can't be clicked. And the second item will be for if the button is selected. So now that we've defined this button text color, we can go back into activity main and then update the text color attribute of the button to be this new color resource that we've defined. So now you can see the text has been updated to red if I make it selected, the text color should turn to white and the background should turn to this red color. So we should invert them. And then if the button it gets disabled, then you can see the text color goes back to white. One thing that's worth noting about the state list resource, whether you're talking about a color state resource or a drawable state list resource, is that the order does matter. The state list is traversed from top to bottom. As soon as match is found, that option will be used and the rest won't be checked. So that means that the default option should always be shown last. So for example, if we moved this line at the very top, that would mean the next two item tags would never get checked because we would always match the first option here, meaning the text color would always be this red color, which is not what we want. I hope this video gave you an idea of how to quickly change the background color of a button using this color state list resource. I'll leave a link in the description to the code we wrote. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.